You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Rookie Blue After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Rookie Blue After Show. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when we come for you? Hey guys, Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another AfterBuzz TV After Show for Rookie Blue, Season 4, Episode 11, Under Fire. I'm Tiana Hobson, and joining me tonight, I have my two lovely co-hosts. Hi everyone, I'm Marissa Serafini. And Dominique Dufour. And we are coming for you, bad boy. Because this episode had me yeah. on the edge of my seat the entire time. <laughs> um, Tiana yeah. and I were watching it. We're like, what is going on? There were screams. There was jumping. There was anger. There was laughter. There was laughter. There was, yes, there was. I, I like this episode. There was a nice balance of comedy and seriousness. And then the whole thing just went down. I'm like, what? This episode. Yeah. So good. <laughs> WTF, man. Pretty yeah, much. Really. <laughs> <laughs> like, throughout the whole thing. Yes, and I know people were tweeting us like, oh my gosh, can you believe that? And I was scared to read my tweets in case we were behind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> luckily, nothing was spoiled. Um, I want to get right into this case. So we have a killer on the loose He's, who's someone after Division 15. It all really starts with Andy and Chloe. Um, I love their moment in the car before everything got all weird when um, Chloe was kind of giving Andy a hard time. Yeah. about her relationship with Nick and what it meant and we should Friends double day yeah. and yeah it was just mm. such a nice warm moment and they get this 911 call about a someone sleeping in the park they go and find out that it's actually just it's fake it was like a bunch of clothes rolled up to look like a human was sitting there and then shots are fired and it was probably one of the scariest moments of my life because, like Andy, how she kind of stood there for a second, like, what was that noise that I just heard? And then you mm -hmm. turn and see Chloe clutching her throat, and you're just like, what? I mean, I know we all saw it coming from the previews last right. week, but it was still just, I don't think I was expecting it so early on. Right. I liked how they shot that, too, because the, cinematically, like, just looking at it and the whole camera revolving around her it's kind of like reflective of how people would feel if that really did happen to them just mm -hmm. being not in just knowing what's going on or literally around them and hearing gunshots and you don't know what's going on that's scary yeah mm -hmm. well we got to give credit to greg smith who directed this episode yes it was like amazing this episode was by far did I mean, even with what all, what all happened, it yeah. was one of the better episodes of the series, mm -hmm. I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, just everything involved. Um, Andy, of course, you know, starts calling for backup. They're being shot at, you know, so she pr takes Chloe to cover. I know that we give Andy a hard time about being emotional as an officer, and I understand that what she's going through is very scary and new and all these things. But as an officer, I expected a little bit more of, you know, not her quite freaking out as much mm -hmm. as she was. Because you saw, you know, the veteran when mm -hmm. Shaw arrives on the scene. He's like, okay, Chloe, we're going to do this. And, you know, pressure. And meanwhile, Andy's like, oh, my God, I don't know what's happening. They're coming from over here. Oh, my gosh. And everything's, <laughs> you know, very – she reacted how I would react. Yeah, yeah, I was disappointed. But at the same time, I expected it because that's who she is. Yeah, and it's very – like her character that we know that she acts on emotion but I do applaud her for still being able to think straight yeah. and still be able to ducking undercover and helping Chloe even though mm -hmm. she shot you know she still was yeah she was emotional but she still did her duty that's very true I'm not and not to take anything away from her doing her duty it was yeah. just that was one thing throughout the episode that kind of kept bugging me just that she was so 
not that you should expect to be shot as a police officer, but shots being fired and yeah, that's and, the line of work you're going into. And over the radio frequency, you can know you can hear Ollie and like mm-hmm. uh, who I don't think it was Sam, but the the other police officers like letting uh, them know, encouraging them. No, we're gonna be here on. Mm-hmm. We're gonna help you out. We're backing you up. You know, just just like walking them through her her through it because obviously this is something new to her. That like yeah, it's not something she, she hasn't experiences dealt every with day. yet. And but the other police officers who were talking to them, they're veterans. They know what it's like. Yes, and then we have the second 911 call. Um, this time, Shaw and Gail um, respond to it, and it's another setup where they pull into an alleyway, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and as soon as he gets out of the car, shots start getting fired again. They're lucky enough to have made it out of that one without getting shot or anything, but it's after that that people realize that someone's targeting the 15th division yeah and mm-hmm. it's time to bring in the big guns enter luke enter luke, enter luke. Um, enter luke. he's a pretty big gun sure yeah he's a pretty big gun <laughs> he, he comes when all the serious stuff goes down yeah and you know he's like who have you guys pissed off lately yeah. it's like yeah. hey that could be i think many yeah who have we not pissed yeah. off lately? <laughs> that can be true for any police station too you know it's like well i mean People get mad when we pull them over because they, you know, their parking meter was expired or whatever. You know, people get mad about the stupidest things and complain about things. Yeah. But, um, you know, they're trying to see if it's gang related maybe because they put mm-hmm. away some people and blah, 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 boring. The gangs from last yeah, week. Yeah, the gangs from last week. Yeah. Um, and the trial's coming up for that. Um, meanwhile, the shell casings match on both of them. There's another um, – they call in all the off-duty co- – um, officers around the city to come in. Um, Best makes his whole little speech about how, you know, no one's allowed to respond to 911 calls without someone backing them up. About two units. Yeah, mm-hmm. two units at a time, which... That's smart. That's smart. Now, people didn't follow those rules all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, I just gotta <laughs> say, when they're back into the parade, because the first parade that we saw in the episode, you know, everyone's loose like normal at the mm-hmm. beginning of the episode, but this time, everyone's literally standing in line like, no, we are a force, we are uh, we are a brotherhood, yeah. and we're gonna stand for ourselves, and we're gonna stand for others, and just like how they were all lined up, I'm like, this is serious. Everyone's a unit. Yeah. yeah, and one thing I noticed, which I don't know, it, it has probably nothing to do with anything else in the episode, but the way everyone was standing was, like, at full attention, mm-hmm. and Andy was standing with her arms crossed, and that was just something that as they were kind of panning down each line and you could see the line of officers, mm-hmm. it was the one thing that, you know, made her stand out in my mind, and I don't know if it was done on purpose or not, but... It was just something that kind of caught my eye, and I was like, why is she not standing like everyone else? I noticed that, but I just didn't, like, it didn't phase me type of thing. So, like, I guess I didn't think too much into it. Yeah, I'm trying not to because I don't (laughs) think that there's much into it. But for some reason, it really stuck out in my mind that she was just kind of in – not to say that when you stand with your arms crossed, it's more relaxed mm. because she didn't have her hip popped out or anything it's like that. It's actually more defensive. Yeah, but This yeah. happened just, to her. She literally, yeah. she, I, and we find out, she, she was, did take yeah, a bullet. She took you a know, bullet. This happened to her. So it might have been like she's, she understands it more so than the other people. Maybe. Maybe. I'll, I'll be, I'll take Anik's advice and not think too much <laughs> into it. <laughs> I'm trying to be more aware of what I'm watching. Um, <laughs> So after their speech about, you know, always having backup, Shaw and Gail again are responding to another 911 call. Diaz says he's, you know, on his way. He's two minutes out. But this 911 call is different because it doesn't actually have a voice. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just a couple. It's a call and no voice, nothing. So they don't know what they're walking into. It could be another attack, Mm -hmm. an ambush, anything. Um, They open the door and find an old man. Um, unconscious on the ground and his gar- granddaughter who's o- holding the phone and she's deaf and doing sign language and they have their guns out and she already must have been so scared yeah yeah i i like this particular scene and then i didn't because we saw a good side of gail mm-hmm. like she's mm-hmm. helping she's she's she got hired you know for a reason she has qualities that are good um in the field but then when they were going into the apartment, they weren't checking doors like they're supposed to yeah. before yeah. they find they find the victim. But I'm like, there's a door right there. You should check it before someone else 
you know, pops out pops and, out. you know, offs you. But so I, I don't know, I just thought it a little off-putting that they didn't officially check all the doors before they went to help <laughs> to see if the atmosphere, the room was cleared. I was mad yeah. because I didn't know if the grandpa ended up being okay. And I know. The yeah, little I mean, girl, does she have parents? Was she just being babysat by him for the day? Does Is he her guardian? You they know? tend to do that, and it kind of annoys me when they, like, start kind of like a little storyline. I mean, this is mm-hmm. not really a storyline per se, but they don't actually finish it. Yeah, no they, resolution. Maybe we'll yeah. find that Maybe in the we'll, second episode. We'll come back. To yeah, that. I just need to know that the little deaf girl's okay. Yeah. She, <laughs> She's okay. And I'd like to know if the grandpa's okay. Yeah. He's yeah. the one on the floor. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah. I guess we care about grandpa too. Yes, we do. Um, did we know that Gail um, could sign? We do now. No, but I thought that was a nice touch. I thought that was a really nice touch. I really like Gail this episode. Yeah. And like I like I I really actually do like Gail because there are episodes we just hate her for like who she is and how off putting she is. <laughs> But then when she does something as simple as sign language and helping, and you're like, oh, she's a great person. Yeah. You feel for her. She, she, you know, she's a she human has, being. She has her good qualities and her bad qualities. Exactly. Just like everyone else except for me. Um, <laughs> 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 moving on. <laughs> so um, at this point, we have Celery who – comes into the salary. we're gonna get really yeah i thought they loved, brought her back i, I loved celery it's like not two episodes but three look at that and and hopefully she's getting serious too. with ollie i mean she's living with him of course you know her house is being fumigated so that's why right. but mm-hmm. once you kind of uh-huh. move your stuff in with someone do yeah. you ever really move it out no no, no. unless you get kicked out. unless, you get, <laughs> unless, the, up. <laughs> unless the relationship suddenly ends and then you have to call a u-haul um, <laughs> I am not speaking from personal experience at all. <laughs> sure. Um, so Celery is back, and she's been, I mean, I love how they kind of set it up throughout the episode because, you know, she had been calling him all day, asking him where stuff was, the silliest little things, you know, she was calling him for. So now Shaw's not answering his phone. She tells Andy that she saw a guy in a van outside his house. He was there for hours and then was asking questions about, you know, oh, he should be home by now because of what happened. Um, We find out that she IDs the guy as Kevin Ford, Mm -hmm. who is the Mm -hmm. same man that Cruz had been harassing and breaking into his house. You know, Mm -hmm. all those all those little things she was doing over there. which is the first break they've had in this case. So now they at least know who he's after. So then you have Andy and Sam rushing to go find Cruz, who's staying at her sister's house. Um, luckily, she was still safe. But before they got there, Nick was in her house. Right. Yeah. And By himself. By no himself. Backup. Yeah. No backup. No like, backup. No backup I'm again. Like, they literally just told you to have two units on site wherever you okay. go. Mm-hmm. And you go into the house. By yourself? Yes. Come on. By yourself. By yourself. Leave I mean, at Nick least. alone, okay? Hey, Leave I'm just alone. saying. We're going to have an issue. You know, <laughs> but they gave no, direct I orders. I get it. But it's Nick, and We're just saying that wants. your man needs to be smarter <laughs> about, you know, himself because he could have been seriously harmed or hurt. True. That is true. I mean, Sean and Gail had just gone into that apartment without their second unit because mm-hmm. DS was running late. At least there's two of them, though. Nick is going Nick in completely by, by himself. Blind. When there's Blind. when we know that someone's targeting <laughs> cops, the house is ransacked, you know, someone's clearly been there. I would have turned around and left because in scary movies that's always the point <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where my people don't survive. Um, like don't go down there. Yeah, don't go down the stairs Come alone. Better you go up. <laughs> like you always go up and through the window. Yeah, like, you don't go down into a dark space <laughs> like, by yourself and there is a killer on the list. Yeah, you just don't go inside. Once you open the door and see up oh, the furniture's overturned all right i'm going back to my car hang yeah, out right, i'm gonna yeah. wait like, actually i'm on, gonna man. knock on a neighbor's door and wait with them <laughs> until my backup gets there <laughs> just to make sure i'm okay and, like the thing i don't get is that he was in the military force he should yeah. know better than this mm-hmm. he knows tactics you shouldn't do that by yourself you always have someone back you up you always have someone back you up 
Um, so it's at this point that we find out that um, Cruz actually left a note for her neighbors on the fridge. Mm-hmm. So that's how um, Harold, Kevin, I keep wanting to call him Harold Ford. <laughs> um, Kevin Ford would know where she is. Mm-hmm. Um, Sam and Andy, of course, get to Cruz in time. Sadly, though, our poor Officer Shaw is on his way in finally to be Nick's backup. Right. And because for some reason, why was Nick not with Diaz? Did why I miss was, something completely? Why was Shaw not with Gail all of a sudden? I know. Yeah, like, like, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, sudden they together. lost their partners yeah, like, at the most pivotal point. I think is that they went back to the division. They got the orders to, you know, have backup uh, wherever you go. And then, like, when they left again, they split off with different people. That might have been it. Maybe. Which goes back to Maybe. my theory as to why they have different partners every week. That's confusing. That annoys me. Because I can never keep up on the episode. It's like, like stick who was with one partner. Well, Nick was supposed to go back out in the field with Andy. Andy was told to stay. And so Nick probably went off with Ollie. But they were in two separate yeah, they cars. They were in two separate cars. See, then again, this yeah. goes to show. <laughs> you're supposed to have two units. You're supposed to, <laughs> you're supposed to have a partner with you at the very least. Yeah. Make sure you have yeah. somewhat a buddy system, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing, because, like, every episode, we always see two of them together. Like, mm-hmm. oh, like they're always in pairs. And then the episode when they're supposed to be in pairs, they're not. Yes. What's up with that? I don't know. We got we to gotta get on that. We got to talk to them. <laughs> Come on, give, give them some knowledge, you know, be like, look, you guys are doing this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Come talk to us. We'll help you out. We'll help you sort through some things. And um, one of the things that also happened while Nick was in Cruz's house is that if he were to call it in, then everyone would get, you know, called to mm-hmm. the house and then mm-hmm. all of her secrets would eventually come out, including the creepy room in the basement downstairs filled with pictures that, of Kevin. That was a little creepy. Ford. Ford. That's like a, that's like that, stalking. I mean, that's literally that obsession. Is that's like o- yeah. OCD stalking. Yeah, that's what you find on most crime shows with the murderer mm-hmm. yeah. in their basement of, uh-huh. you know, the victim that they're stalking before Your they pr- attack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting since this episode ended with Shaw being knocked out. It'll be interesting right. to see how, how the division takes, you know, Marlo stuff like are they going to be really that invested in her mental health when they see you know this ward versus actually we just need to focus on getting Shaw back like what is everyone's mind going to be like when mm. when that comes back so I have a good prediction but I'll save it <laughs> please write it down so you don't forget I don't have a pen oh here <laughs> borrow mine <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> and while Marissa's doing that Make sure you guys go on to SerialBuddies.com. That's S E R I E L. I can spell. It's really late it's here, really guys. Late. Cereal, and we've had a but very late. Serial Buddies with an S, not a C. Um, <laughs> spell it either way, you'll find it. Oh, you can? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was hoping. Okay. I believe we have it set up. If you spell it like the actual breakfast meal or whatever meal, whenever you time a day you eat it, cereal. <laughs> breakfast or dinner. It'll still redirect back to the regular cereal. Buddies. Well, make sure you check out this hilarious film um, brought to you by Maria Menunos and Kevin Undergaro. Brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hilarious. We're laughing. You'll be laughing. <laughs> Dexter makes Dumb and Dumber. Help us um, keep the lights on here at AfterBuzz. Help us help you. Yeah, <laughs> help us help you. We give you all this great content, and we don't charge you. So go download our film, and you'll enjoy it. And make sure you let us know what you think of it. Also, while you're letting us know, get onto YouTube, iTunes, anywhere, and download our podcast. Make sure you're watching us. Rate us on iTunes. Give us five stars. Comment on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, we read all of we them. We read all of them, and we'll yeah. give shout outs later in the show. Yeah, we give shout outs. We respond. <laughs> we love it when you agree, especially when you agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. yeah, thank you for those opinions. Yeah, yes. right. <laughs> that, that, that was fun to read. That was yeah. a great <laughs> discussion this past week, everyone. Great job. And go, it's okay. Tiana. We have opinions. <laughs> we have our opinions. Yes, we all do, and. Wow. Okay, another shocker of this episode. Chloe, oh. while she's <laughs> in the hospital being treated and Dove is rushing to be by her side and they just had that cute trivia night where she was in his lap the whole time. Uh. And I just love, love, love this couple. 
Yeah. They are adorable. Adorable. Adorbs. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> while she's in the hospital and we're waiting to find out if she's going to live or not, we meet Wes Cole, who um, is from her old division. And at first, you know, it's like, oh, hey, you know, heard she was shot and I wanted to come and check. Oh, yeah, I'm her emergency contact. Why is that? I'm her husband. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a little thing she forgot what? to mention. What? <laughs> Two things I want to say. What? And Chloe getting down with the brothers? All right. <laughs> I was like, all right. And then her name, if, I mean, if she changed her name, Chloe Cole. I just, <laughs> I just thought That'd that was a funny. Cool name. I was like, yeah. that's a kind of cool name, you know? At first I thought, I was like, dude, this might be our killer. Because... First, it, it was the guy that we didn't know, had mm-hmm. no idea who this person is. He so happens to be one of the first people to, to like, show respond up. to Clo- Chloe's aid mm-hmm. and be like, oh, I heard this went down. I don't know how I heard it went down, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, huh, this guy is suspicious. He was suspicious. Yeah, a little bit. He, he had it another reason, obviously. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm not too sure about you right now. Yeah, and then the whole time when Dove, when he was trying to – um, I thought it was hilarious when he was trying to fill out her form. It's like, any medication she's on, like, how would I know? Dove shouts out birth control. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, she's on that birth control. <laughs> how you know. How you know. How you know. Um, but I thought it was, I mean, I guess I kind of understood why Dove didn't really say anything, but at the same time, I didn't really understand why he wasn't like. I mean, he kind of I mean, wants to ask her first, like, what what is what going is, on? Like, his mind is blown on? right now. <laughs> Just found out that she has a husband, but you know they were partners. They mm-hmm. dated on and off for a while. <laughs> go figure. Yeah, go figure. Of course. Um, <laughs> then on a do. on a spur trip to Niagara for yeah. the weekend, I was like, hey, let's get married. That's something I would do. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's not something I would do. But that's something Chloe would do. Yeah, she def- has exactly. like something Chloe would do. Exactly. And something that you would want to do because she makes it seem like such a cool idea. And mm-hmm. yeah, why not? Let's do it. So are they still married? Or did they get it annulled? Did they get a divorce? Like, we don't know much. The thing is, I think had they got a divorce or an annulment, he might not have said, I'm still her husband. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think they might still be married. I think maybe they technically, just kind of like... Technically, they're still married. Or, like, maybe they're separated, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but still technically not... Is he the reason why she left? Ooh. Because I was hoping that he would come in and, you know, when I thought he was still just a partner, I thought that he would come in and maybe spill some beans as to... Why she left. Why she left. Yeah, I was hoping that, too. But but now, you know, we find out that it's a husband, maybe. That's interesting. Maybe that's how that went down. But anyways, he thinks that, you know, he's like, oh, Chloe, she's the best thing ever, and I should have never let her go, and maybe this is our second chance. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Dove is going to need to fight for her. Yeah, I was like, Dove, you better fight for your woman right now. I know you're probably a little hurt because she didn't tell you that she was married and all. Yeah. But it's not, I mean, worse things could have happened. You know, you could have found out that your son's not yours. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. At least you're not Diaz right now. (laughs) It's just a marriage. We can easily fix that. You know, there's no (laughs) child involved or anything. That we know of. I mean, maybe she has a child up there, too, that we don't know about. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. About I have so many <laughs> questions knows? for Chloe, and I can't get any of them answered because she's asleep right now. Yeah. But she is. She is. She's looking, in critical condition. Yeah, she's you in, know, we gotta give her. She was shot. Yeah. Twice. She was shot twice, but I just have so many questions for her that I need answered. So I need her to wake up. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if she's gonna be able to talk when she first wakes up because she was shot in the throat. Mm. So then mm-hmm. she's gonna need to write out some answers. Was mm-hmm. she shot in the throat or the neck? Or the oh. neck. Neck, but, but it was like neck. really close to the jugular. She could have literally bled. Yeah, the to doctor death. said, you know, yeah. any yeah. closer, it's amazing that it didn't hit any arteries. Yeah, because that's well, she was still able to t- to speak too when she was shot. Yeah, yeah. So. Andy couldn't get her to shut up. Mm-hmm. It yeah. was yeah. She really couldn't. She was like, Stop but that's talking. good. But you know, keep her conscious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Once she stopped talking, is when, especially mm-hmm. a girl like Chloe, when she stops talking, that's when you should be concerned. That's serious. That's serious. Um, and then we had 
Mr. Sam <laughs> <Sorry>. over here. <laughs> Tiana and I just laughed so hard at his like creeper look. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So the scene when Andy was saying bye to um, Nick after Bess told her that she couldn't go out on patrol because she had taken a bullet that day. Mm -hmm. um, Andy's just, or Sam's just standing in the background lurking hard. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, they're it, it, kissing like, goodbye. <laughs> and then like the camera, you know, like rack, rack, fo rack, rack focuses focus. onto his face and he's just like <laughs> stare like <laughs> anger. He's got like the fish face thing going on. It's like... <laughs> I don't, I don't. I, I think that was interesting how they had a PDA moment in such a serious time yeah. at the division. I and like, at the division, too. Yeah, at the division. And, like, we, we've we seen them kiss in public, but mm -hmm. has it really been this open yet? I don't think so. I think they I snuck don't... a kiss one time because I remember thinking, like, oh, they're at work. But other than that, yeah, no. But, like, this was... Like three kisses. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, it was one of, of those everybody. things, you know, like everyone's life is literally on the line. Andy could have been Chloe, you know, if she had yeah, been she was two steps behind, you know, too. she was getting shot at too. So it's one of those moments where it's like, you know what, forget what everyone says, forget the drama between yeah. our relationship. Like, we're in this moment now. We want to be together. We're mm -hmm. together. We're happy. So let's just and embrace then, it. And then Nick says, I'll be back. I promise. And I'm like, oh, Nick. Never promise. Don't make a promise that you don't know and you can't keep. I know. Especially in this kind of situation. Yeah. Especially when there's a cop killer out there. Yeah. And. Because he was just trying to reassure her. I know. It was sweet, but I'm like, oh, now something's going to happen to Nick. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what my mind went to. I'm like, great. Something's going to happen to him. Foreshadow. Exactly. <laughs> this is like you just jinxed yourself. Yeah, that is that is kind of a jinxing self moment. And then one of the other Sam faces was that when we they get in the car. Yeah, when they're getting she in the car. She just called Nick, <laughs> and he was like, "You told him," mm -hmm. and she's like, "Yeah, I told him." And I was like, "And there's just like another cute <laughs> face." It's like, yes, she told Nick because she is trying to be a good person. She's trying to be the old Andy who did the right thing, and open communication lines with your boyfriend is okay to have. I think. Mm. Sorry, Sam. Sorry that you're <laughs> jealous right now. And more jealousy happened in um, the bar with Gail when she, in the opening of the yes. episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> her and Holly. Mm -hmm. um, Holly walks on over and orders herself a drink. And Chloe's like, oh, make that too. Here, I'll get the first round. She's like, oh, I'm actually meeting someone. And she has, like, a little date over there. Another black girl, what? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just feeling ethnic in their dating in this episode tonight. I was very proud. Um, and, you know, Chloe, or Gail, is over the, sitting down mad-dogging that date. Yeah. For mm -hmm. reals. And I was like, oh, she's jealous. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, jealous. she was. And then I love how Holly had the convenient excuse of, oh, the courier was sick, so I had to bring this up. Really, you wanted to check on her and yeah. go out of my way, go down to Division, yeah. and see Gail. Had to go see Gail, mm -hmm. sneak into an interrogation uh -huh. room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, the moment they went into a room together, I was like, oh, no. They're going to get caught. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you know something's going to happen. Oh, it's going down. <laughs> Definitely. And then Gail's, and Gail kisses her because she wouldn't, she just needed to stop talking. Yeah, sure. right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I talk a lot. <laughs> no one's kissing me to shut me up. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so I'm saying if it's if it's that easy to get a kiss around uh, here, then but I'm the, doing the lead wrong. up to that was Holly making all these lame excuses like, yeah. oh yeah, the the date was nothing. It was just you know, a friend set me up. And I'm like, yeah, you're you're just saying this to make Gail feel better and be mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm really I'm just thinking about you. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah, uh, I like <laughs> these two together. I think I, that Holly yeah. Holly is fun and. Gail is so much more relaxed and a nice, playful person when yeah. she's with Holly. That's so uptight. Yeah, she's yeah. not as uptight. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So I, I hope that they can... It's lovely moments. Yeah, lovely moments. I hope that they explore <laughs> things further. Gail, with her sexuality, exploring those lines. Like, kind of how Oliver was talking about, but maybe he was talking about him in Celery and trying new things. And in life, or like, maybe, wait. or maybe he was talking about Gail and Holly. Yeah, Oliver will never tell, but I think he was talking about Gail. Um, 
But uh, like, I just like how Holly went down there to show that she actually does care about yeah. Gail. Yeah. Like, and Gail great. does have a friend. Yeah. Because at the end of the yeah. day, Gail most of the time doesn't feel like she has any real friends at the division. And here's someone showing up to check on her. I mean, her own brother didn't really come <laughs> ask any questions yeah. if she was okay. I mean, he was in and out of that division all day. And yeah. Too busy with Trace. Yeah. I mean, he got, his sister got shot at and nothing. Yeah. But he, his time was being spent with the lovely Trace C. I mm. like him. I do too. I want more of him in season five. I think we will He's get more of him. He's growing on me. He's growing. He's growing on me. Yeah. I, they I are like cute him. though. Like, I, I think Tracy definitely needs another man in her life. Yeah. And and I think it's time. And I I like St- Steve. He he's getting there. He's a good guy. Especially now, Steve wants to even meet, meet Leo. Leo. Yeah. Like, okay, now it's getting serious. He tried to like smoothly get in there. Yeah. Like, oh well, I'll just take him over, and you know, we'll grab some of this and like hang out till she comes. And Tracy was like, No, he's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I and I understand her hesitation, mm-hmm. especially when dating another cop, where you know you don't know what's gonna happen, and. You bring these people into your life, and it's a child. They get attached. She's probably still trying to recover, just like Tracy is, you know, putting the pieces back together one by one. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine if they killed them off, too? No, that would be horrible. I know. I would just send Tracy right over the, like, right over the, like, right oh, over, like, the like building. Just another guy killed. Oh, that, that'd be terrible. That would be the worst luck. Well, I guess. She's, ne- she's never going to want to yeah, date. Yeah, she's never going to want to date. <laughs> I mean, it would keep her away from dating cops, at least. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's that. So, yeah, I liked um, their working relationship. They didn't really solve anything. They just kind of went out and found out that it wasn't Mm gang-related because they Mm -hmm. talked to, like, one person and then decided that it was time for him to meet Leo. So he's going to be coming over for dinner. I liked how she said, and wine, a nice bottle of yeah. wine. You can get that for Leo. Yeah. yeah. He, he loves a good red. Yeah. <laughs> Dry. 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 <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I liked it too. Yep. And I was glad because I, I know we talked about this. I completely forgot about um, Noelle for the past couple episodes oh, and how she was cancer. the breast yeah, cancer scam. Yeah, they didn't bring that about it. I, I'm glad that they brought this back up because they just left us hanging. Yeah. As they normally do. <laughs> and, I mean, the way they slipped it in there was so just like, oh, yeah, she you know, came back negative, just got to keep looking out for it. So I don't know what that means for her character, if we'll be seeing her back around mm-hmm. sometime soon or not. She's still on maternity leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. But hopefully... She can still come back. So. Yes. <laughs> yep. That is that. And I know that Marissa had some news and gossip. News and gossip. <laughs> yep. After Buzz TV News. All right. Let, let me get my news. Hold on. All right. So, there, uh, according to Red Carpet Report TV.com, there was a nice little interview with Charlotte Sullivan, who, of course, as we know, plays Gail on the show. And they asked her... Um, just about her character and like her new relationship with Holly and whatnot, and uh, they they asked her um, uh, about the sexuality and mm-hmm. whatnot, and Charlotte said that she herself questioned Gail's sexuality, and therefore the writers actually put that into the storyline. Huh. Oh, so yeah, I thought that was cool too. I love that. Uh, yeah, and. Um, heard something <laughs> but uh that she uh said it's still nice that the characters are still considered rookies because uh she said you you're not supposed to know what you're doing when you're a rookie she'd rather be green because once they're ripe you rot I'm like oh that's a nice mm, analogy nice. yeah yeah so um it's a it's a nice little interview i just suggest anyone go read it it's nice fun um, at redcarpetreporttv.com. And then, of course, our st- readings. Yay, readings from yay. last week. Episode Deception. Uh, for the Ricky Blue scored a 1.5, up four tenths from last week's in the 18 to 49 division. And they had 6.03 million viewers. Wow. Yeah. I, for, hope, for I think it, my prediction is that it's going to go up 
after yeah. this week's episode. Yeah. I think, I think it's, it's going definitely on. going up after this episode, and then the finale is going to just, whew. Yeah. And then I'd like to do quick shout-outs to our people on YouTube and iTunes for, so I'll do this really fast, and forgive me if I mispronounce your names. Uh, for YouTube, thank you to all who commented. They were, they were fun to read, a lot of opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of opinions. <laughs> but uh, thank you to Tanya Nitt, Ashton McCall, Ryan Whittleson, Welch's 445-445, Elba Chazé, Jack What Up 7, what up? <laughs> 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 Tina Stone, Andy Sen, I'm Still Me 143, Evanthea Richard, Joseph Boza, and Annie Fee 90. And then also, we got a nice comment, five-star comment on iTunes. They said, love this podcast. The hosts are fabulous. Yay! So, yes, thank you, everyone. You're all fabulous. Yes, you're all fabulous. Thank you so much. Even though you don't agree with me. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. Even though you're on the right side of the (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) All right, so let's get into our predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV (laughs) predictions. I want Marissa to start because I want to know what she thought of in the middle of our talk. Okay, I wrote my predictions really, really fast, so forgive me if I can't read my own handwriting. All right, they shot Swerf. What the hell? What? (laughs) I can't believe they showed that in the preview. What? I will tell you this. That showed, and I threw my hands in the air. She took off. What? And I just took off. I left the room. I couldn't be there anymore. I'm done. So... Seeing Sam get shot makes me think a lot more officers are going to go down in a bad way. Maybe not get killed, but definitely get hurt. Um, And I think Marlo's little shrine that she has towards Kevin is actually going to help with the information on on Kevin's whereabouts with Ollie. Oh. Mm. Yeah, like all this stuff is just going to somehow point them in the correct direction. Uh, I think when Chloe wakes up, and I believe she is going to wake mm-hmm. up. Like, she's I gonna think she, she's going to pull through. She's a tough girl. She will tell us her breakup or how, why she left uh, Wes. And, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I, don't, I, I feel like I'm in a Twilight Zone right now. Um, I think that it's going to be like a little triangle type of thing with Chloe when she does wake up. And she's going to need to explain herself to Dove. <laughs> I also think that the whole Swarik getting shot is going to maybe send over Andy to his side. Oh, what? I don't. I know. I don't. I'm sorry. I love. I I'm love totally Colin. Andy and Nick. I'm not I ready too. for it to be over. So am I. But this is we my prediction. We this didn't even prediction. mention their hot steamy scene at the beginning. Oh, of the uh, <laughs> hello. This is better than training for a 5K. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a workout. I'd like to know. Um, that was hot. Yes, it yeah, was. So Back I to your prediction. That, I think that it might just send Andy more towards the Swarek side. I don't know. And I don't know what's going to happen with Marlo. I honestly, like, I can't even, like, guess right now. <laughs> I can't guess. I know that when they show you previews, they show you stuff because they want to keep you off the scent. The guy says Nick's name, says Collins, and then Swarick, like, said something in turn. So I'm like, why, why is he targeting these people? I see the connection with Marlo. I see a connection with Shaw because he was the one knocking door to door to his neighbors, you know, asking questions Mm -hmm. i don't see how nick was really in his you know vision at all he's just targeting everybody just and he knows all their names that's creepy yeah Yeah. um because he's actually at the division yeah i he's on their ground yeah he's on their turf dressed up in a disguise his face should be plastered all over the the walls so you know he has to be he had to sneak in there And to get back to where the officers are, you know, that's another thing that he had to sneak through. Um, But I think that Swarek will survive. And I predict that Marlo will, I don't know what she's going to do. She's she's on down. Yeah, she's, (laughs) I think she's on a downward Downward path. This might spark some things that are going to be rough for her to deal with. Do you think Marlo will stick around after the finale because once they find out that this was maybe all linked to her to her 
that mm, they I think, might just... I think she might want to transfer just yeah. to get away from... Like, legitimately the, fire her yeah. or have her transferred. I do think that um, this Officer Cole might request a transfer to the 15th Division, Ooh. Chloe's Ooh. husband. Just Hello saying. Hello, Triangle. Mm. Yeah. Where um, can everyone find you guys on social media? You can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at TV. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Anique Dufour and my website, AniqueDufour.com. And you can follow me at the Tiana Hobson on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you guys um, rate us and comment. We want to hear what you guys think and let us know your predictions. And we'll see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.